This is how I started designing my app using Apple's new liquid glass. Glass is a new look that Apple just created and it's still in beta, which means not everybody has access to it yet, but developers can still use it to start adding a new look to their apps. I'm gonna run through exactly how I got access to Liquid Glass in Xcode and how I was able to start designing with it in my iPhone app. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Ricky. I'm a designer and engineer and I'm sharing everything that I learned building out my own content planning app. So to use Liquid Glass, you need two things, free account with the Apple developer program and the latest developer beta updates on both your iPhone and your MacBook. Once you sign up, your iCloud account connects to the developer program, which means when you go to set up an update on either your phone or your MacBook, you're gonna have that option to download the developer betas. And in this case, it's gonna be iOS 26 and Tahoe 26. I actually had to hard reset my laptop to get enough space for the update. It's only 35 gigabytes, but for some reason I couldn't find where all of this stored was going. Just something to keep in mind. You might have to do a little bit of deleting and figuring things out before you do this. But once you have Tahoe 26 on your MacBook, then you can just download Xcode if you don't have it already and Xcode beta. The one you're going to be using is Xcode beta because it has all the latest updates and it's kind of a totally redesigned version of Xcode, new layouts, new UI, everything. So uh, a lot of new features in there. So at this point, I had everything I needed in place to start adding liquid glass to my app. So in iOS 26, any high level navigational components like your tab bar or your toolbar will automatically get that glass material look as long as you wrap it in some very simple code. This code basically just checks whether or not the iPhone that you're running the app on is actually running on iOS 26. And if it's not, then the look of that component is gonna fall back to any of the earlier versions. Here's a screenshot of what that code actually looks like and how I wrapped it around my tab bar component. Pay less attention to the actual tab view component code that I have in my app. What's most important is that you wrap yours within that snippet that I shared. And that's what's gonna transform it to the glass material. In my last vlog, I mentioned that I wanted to add a floating action button that was separate from the tab bar, but literally right next to it. And I wanted it to have that same glass effect that the tab bar does. And I knew this was possible because I had seen examples of it online, but I couldn't find any direct docs from Apple on how to do it. This all for me was finding this post on X by a guy I follow named Thomas. I wrote out his example code and tried to follow it and understand it a little better. And then I fed a screenshot of that to Cursor and Claude to change my tab bar to work in the same way. I'm adding my tab view code here just so you can see the changes and understand them. But let me give you like a quick high level summary of what it is. So the trick here is that you can actually just add a tab to your tab bar with the role of search. And what that's gonna do is create this action button that's separated automatically from your main tab bar. My app, I didn't want that button to initiate a search. I wanted it to initiate the beginning of a new content post. So Chris's changes allowed me to do all that and I was also able to swap out the icon for something that looks like I'm creating a new piece of content. Something to mention is that Cursor also added three Swift files that help me manage the apps tab bar. So I'm gonna show screenshots of each of these so you can pause and get a better idea of what they're doing. So the last little addition I made was having the tabs minimized to the left when you're scrolling down on the page. This is by far the easiest thing I've added. All I had to do was add a modifier called tab bar minimize behavior on scroll down and it works perfectly. You can think of a modifier in Swift as something that just changes the appearance of whatever view that you're applying it to. If you're interested in how I use AI to design my app, I just made a whole video covering my current process. So make sure to check that out. Thanks for watching. Definitely let me know what you wanna see more of in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.